About a year ago, I made a couple of videos talking about mining in Minecraft and facts about it. However, that was back in the 1.16 update, and now we are in the 1.18 update with a new cave and ore generation which changes everything. If you want to see what I had found about ore generation in 1.16, be sure to check out those videos, link in the description. Here you can see a graph of the new versus old ore generation, which shows us which levels ore are most prevalent in. Today I will be attempting to find out how accurate this is, and I suspect that this graph will have a few minor errors in it, mainly due to the fact that ores cannot spawn midair in caves, and there are now many big spacious caves. The way I shall achieve this is by automating the data collection process, as to get accurate results I will need a lot of data and manually collecting it will simply take far too long. I will use Python to automate up just about everything, and I will start by copying over my old files as they will have the same function as what I will need today. However, I will need to edit them, as world generation has changed and I need to accommodate for the new Y levels. I figured that the library I was using to pass the Minecraft save files, the .mca file format, will continue to work. However, I was mistaken. It took me some time to figure out exactly what went wrong, but I found out that the source of the problem was that Mojang had changed the MCA file structure by moving block data up a level in a tree. I set out to fix the code in the library, however, I kept running into problem after problem, as I did not previously know how this library functioned. After a while I figured out how everything worked and fixed the library to be able to read the save data once again. However, I then ran into another issue. Mojang had also changed the data they saved to the file, or at least it appeared so, don't take my word. From some quick testing I found that air blocks that have sky axis are not stored in the file starting from above the subjunk that has non-air blocks in it. This is actually a good idea as it will keep file sizes lower with increased world height and is easy to put them back in by adding air blocks if no data is present, which is exactly what I did to prevent my code from crashing. Now that everything was working, I left my PC to run the code overnight, plus some more after getting a bit more data for Amplified Terrain Generation, as there were not many high places to test out all the graph that Mojang provided. Then after some quick automated data processing and visualization, my work was complete. The total amount of data for non-amplified terrain was covering an area of over 16 million blocks, or a volume of over 5.3 billion blocks. For Amplified, I only took an area of just over 1 million blocks, as it took much longer to process and I was running out of time for this video. Now I bet you were thinking this data will be all nice on a graph. Well you're actually correct! This time I also quickly automated the production of graphs in Matplotlib for Python to more easily visualize the results that I have found. Here they are! I analyzed my data in two different ways, first by finding which Y levels each ore is most prevalent in, and then which Y level is best to dig at to maximize how much ore you will find. All of the data presented here will have some error in it and should not be taken as fact as I can only collect so much and random world generation will play a factor to the results, so your mileage may vary. So let's take a look at some of this data. We will start with coal. As you can see, coal is most commonly distributed along Y37. Uh, there's two peaks here on this graph and the graph kind of just goes like up and then down. Looks pretty basic. This is for non-amplified terrain so there's not much data above Y100 really. But there's two peaks as you can see here and then if we look at how the clusters would look like, so that would be the best level to mine at, we can see that it's actually the same peaks but the cluster peaks at Y56. Now I still go with Y37 because that's just where most coal is and I don't think it really makes that much of a difference, both look pretty similar to me, um, but you can, see, you can see the differences in the graphs. Let's also take a look at how it looks in Amplified Terrain. So you can see that there's still the two peaks over here, however because we now have so much more terrain above, we can see that most of the coal is actually at Y100, however this isn't much data and so there's many jagged lines here. Um, if, if I had more data then this would be smoothed out quite a bit and we can look at the cluster levels which does look a bit more smoothed out and still at Y100 of course. But the general idea looks like the curve tends to be peaking at 100, even if you were to smooth it out with a lot more data. Somewhere around there is the best one. Next let's take a look at iron. As we can see, it starts a little bit flat and then there's a big peak and then it kind of dies down to almost nothing. And similar is true for the cluster iron. Both peak at around Y13 to Y15. So that would be the most ideal place to dig at for iron in a normal world. In an amplified terrain, we can see that there's two peaks once again. There's a normal peak we had at the low Y levels, and then there's another peak 
looks like about Y170. However, I would I would say that the peak doesn't actually exist, and this is def definitely just due to it being a small sample size. But there's a definite trend peaking at around Y150, and we can see that for, same for the cluster iron. Next is copper, and you can see it peaks at around Y37, and the same happens with the cluster where it peaks at 36. And then we can also see that not much is different for the amplified terrain generation. For gold, we can see two peaks, and I'm not too sure how to interpret it. But we can see that the highest one peaks at Y negative 17, and for clusters, it's about the same at Y minus 19. In amplified terrain, it's much, it's very much the same. Nothing changes there because gold doesn't go up high enough. Now, the most interesting one will be diamonds, where it peaks at minus 59 and rapidly declines back to zero towards Y16. And the best level to mine at would be at minus 58. And the same is said for amplified terrain. Now the emerald graph is a lot more jagged because of a lack of data, however we can see that there's a general trend where it peaks towards 97, the 100 area, and the best Y level to dig at is actually surprisingly at 82, however more data would be better and it will show in the amplified terrain where we can see that the general trend is actually that it peaks a lot higher up where a line of best fit would peak, probably peak towards 200 and the base clustered emerald as you can see is towards 180. Lapis is quite interesting, it's very similar to the graphs provided. There's a flat line towards the bottom and then there's a big peak and then it flattens back off and we can see the same for the cluster. But Mojang were pretty correct about that, it looks good to me. And then the same for the amplified terrain. Now another thing I looked at is spawners and I found that they flat line between negative 50 and 0 and then another flat line between 0 and 50 as can be seen here. And then for the amplified terrain, the, there's a lot less data so it looks more jagged, but I think it's a similar trend. Now one final thing I wanted to look at is where to find amethysts. I specifically searched for budding amethyst blocks, and I found that it was kind of a flat line between negative 50 and 50, so that is the given range. I'm not sure why it dips so, li so low at zero, however you can see that the peak is at minus 47, however I think anywhere between negative 50 and 50 is a pretty good chance of finding amethyst as can be seen here. And then I don't think anything changes in the amplified terrain. So in conclusion we can see that Mojang's graph is actually pretty similar to our data. In fact I would say that Mojang's graph is going to be the absolute truth because I cannot collect enough data to fit it well enough to their graph. However what the graphs I did show are very promising towards Mojang's graph. Last time I said I'll make a video about mining in the nether and I do have that coming up even though it's been almost a whole year since I've said I will do it. However my experience with editing the library I was using for parsing MCA files has now given me a good idea for a solution that I will be able to use to conduct the research I wanted to in the way I wanted to for the nether mining. If you enjoyed this video be sure to hit a like, subscribe if you want to see more and hit that notification bell if you don't want to miss anything out because I can assure you I will be continuing with this Minecraft science. Have a good day, bye bye.